friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. Today I will teach you how to make an app for entering quiz questions and answers and saving them in the database. Remember our movie quiz app and landmarks quiz app? They both had questions defined in the code. So every time someone wanted to change the questions, they had to change the code. But we can solve this problem by having a separate app for creating these questions and saving them in the database. Then the quiz app can load these questions and use them. The advantage is that you have custom questions and you can also delete the questions that you don't want to be used in the quiz app anymore. So in the next tutorial, I will also be teaching you how to get those questions from the database. But today's class is about making the app for actually saving those questions and answers in the database. So let's get started. I have already talked about how you can make a free database that is accessible by two different apps in a previous tutorial. The process is super easy and takes less than five minutes. So please make that Redis cloud database first. As you can see that I have my database here that I had created in a previous tutorial. Then open up MIT App Inventor, click on projects, start new project, name it create quiz app. For screen one, make a line or horizontal center. A line vertical should stay on top. Upload media. I got this background from Vecteezy. I will give the link in the video description. Choose this image as the background image for our screen. So click on background image and choose this image. From layout, drag two horizontal arrangements. Make both of them align horizontal center, align vertical center. Height is 20% and width is fill parent. From user interface, drag and drop a label in the top arrangement. Name it question label, Q-U-E-S for short. Font is bold, font size is 20, width is 30% and the text is question colon and the text color is white. From user interface, drag and drop a text box in the top arrangement, rename it to question txt. Make background color white, font is bold, font size is 20, width is 50% and hint is enter question. Similarly, we need to add a label for answer and a text box for the actual answer text here to, with the same properties. So let me quickly do that. Same properties. Text box. Now we need a button, so drag and drop a button below these two horizontal arrangements. Make font bold, font size 20. The background color, I'm going to give it a custom color, dark blue color. So this is a nice color. Shape is rounded and the width is 40%. And I'm going to change the text to Submit and the text color is white. Let me rename the button to so Submit button. Okay, I'm going to drag and drop a label here. This is just for spacing. So the height is 2% and there's no text in it. Okay, now I need a list view which will show my question and answers that have already been saved in the database. Okay, so just drag and drop a list view here. The background color is white and 
make sure that you change the text color to my custom color. So I'm just going to go and copy the custom color from here. And for the list view, I'm going to give the text color the same color. Paste it here. Okay. And last but not the least, I'm going to drag and drop from the storage a cloud DB. Okay. This is a non visible component. Now, this is super important. I'm going to change the properties of this cloud DB. The reason for this is that this is pointing to the default MIT App Inventor servers. And as I have previously explained, that if we use the default MIT App Inventor servers for Cloud DB, two different apps cannot access the same database. This is why I explained how to make a free Cloud DB on Redis servers. Okay, so I copied those properties in a text file and I have explained the complete process in the previous tutorial. So I'm going to just get those properties. So the server address goes here, port. comes here, the password comes here, and this is now quiz db, and I'm going to uncheck this SSL. So this is important, okay? Make sure that you uncheck it. Now go to the block section, and we're going to make two empty lists for our questions and answers. So go to variables, initialize global variable, questions, give it an empty list, duplicate, and it says answers. Now let's write code for our submit button. So click on submit button, get its click event. When the submit button is clicked, we want to save whatever is inside our question text and answer text in the database. So click on cloud db and get its append value procedure. The tag is a text block and the value is questions. And the item to add is whatever is inside our question text. So click on question text and get its text. Duplicate. And now we have answers. So there are two different lists inside a database. And this is answer. We have also used these procedures while making the chat app with rooms. The append value to list triggers the data changed event of the cloud DB after successful storage in the database. So go to cloud DB and get its data changed event. So when the data is changed, we are going to get the tag for which the data has been changed and we are going to get whatever has been successfully saved inside the database. Okay. So first of all, we are going to check what the tag is. Okay. So go to control get the if then else block, go to text, get the compare text block. Inside here we have get tag on the left hand side. First of all change this to equal to and on the right hand side we have our text, our tag value which should be questions. So if the tag is correct that is it is for the questions then whatever has been successfully saved in the database, we are going to put it inside our questions list. So get the setter, make it questions and give it the value that has been returned by the cloud TV. Otherwise, it is answers. So just duplicate it and make it answers. Now we should also show the updated questions with answers in our list view as a question has been added with its answer. Let's first quickly make an empty procedure for that and call it display questions. So just go to procedures, the procedure block, name it display questions. 
Don't worry, we'll write code for it soon. Let's call this procedure from the data changed event after both questions and answers have been saved in the database with the new addition. But how to know that? We can be sure of that if both our lists have the same size now. So check if both the lists have the same size. So an if block from control, an equal to block from maths, and from lists, so we get the length of list block and we get the getter and choose questions and we duplicate it and make this answers. So we are checking if both the questions and answers have the same size. This means that both have been successfully saved in the database. And now we are going to call this procedure. So click on procedures and call this procedure. Okay. Also, we need to load existing questions and answers from the database when the app is started. Go to screen one, get its initialize event, and inside here, click on CloudDB and call its procedure get value. The tag, we have to request data for, so duplicate this. It's better to duplicate so that you don't have a typing error. Okay, and value if not there, so it should be an empty list. So get the create empty list block from lists, duplicate, and here we want the answers tag. So again, I'm going to duplicate it from here because I want it to be exactly the same and I want to avoid any typing errors, okay? This procedure, will trigger the got value event. So click on CloudDB and get this when CloudDB.GotValue event. And inside here, the code is precisely the same as the data changed event. So I can just duplicate. Okay, so exactly the same code as data changed event is inside the got value event. Now let's work on our display questions procedure. So let's come here. I'm going to make a local variable for a list. Unlike a global variable that can be used and accessed anywhere in the code, a local variable, as the name suggests, can only be used in the script where it has been created. For example, this procedure. So let's define a local variable in the display questions procedure by going to variables and getting this first block. I'm going to call it LV list. I'm going to make it an empty list. Now click on the control block and we are going to use this special procedure for going through a list. So this for each number block. And here I'm going to go through both the question and answers list and make a new list by appending the values inside the question and answers one by one. So for each number from one to the size of the questions list. So I can duplicate this. Okay. So this will give me the length of my questions list. And I'm going to go one by one. So this means that start from here, go up till here and increment the loop by one. Okay. So this number, a one will be added to it every time we go through the loop and it will go on till the number becomes bigger than the length of the list and then we will get out of the loop. Go to list and get the add items to list block. And inside here, the list is my, this list, so hover over it, get its get block. The item is a join. I want three text values here. So I'm just going to click on the cog wheel and make three strings here. The first is whatever is inside a questions list for the index denoted by the current value of number. So go to list, get select item from list and the list is the questions list. So I can just duplicate this one and the index is get number. So hover over it and get its getter. Here I have just a text block that has a colon inside it. 
okay and i'm going to put a space before the colon and after the colon okay and just duplicate this one and now this is the answers okay and when we get out of this for loop i'm going to assign this newly constructed lv list to the elements of my list view so click on list view and click on set elements and duplicate this so yes the list view has been constructed lastly add code for deleting questions when someone taps on a question the deletion code is similar to the shopping list app that i've already taught you before we use list views after picking event so click on list view and get its after picking event and whatever has been picked is marked by the selection index so i am going to remove to so click on list and click on remove block and drag it here and our list is the questions list so just duplicate it from here and our index is the selection index that is whatever has been tapped by the user should be deleted from our questions list as you know that our list view list has exactly the same number of items as our questions list and our answers list so the selection index is correct too so click on list view and get the selection index okay remember that we have to delete from the answers list too so duplicate and choose answers last but not the least we have to store the changed questions and answers list in the database so click on cloud db get its call the store value procedure to tag as you know is questions so i'm just going to duplicate here and the value to store is our newly updated questions list again call the procedure but now we are going to store the answers list so let me get the tag for the answers i am duplicating it so that i don't accidentally introduce a typing error here Okay so this is done this will not work on an iOS device as it gives an authentication error with the cloud db on redis i hope you like this video do share it with your friends and family and if you haven't subscribed to my channel kindly do so so that you don't miss any of the great things that i have planned for you in my next class i will teach you how to make an app that loads these questions and answers from the same db thank you for watching this video have a good day and goodbye